Reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3-9 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith be more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Judy here. I wish I could see you like we could before, but I guess we have to stay isolated for a little while longer. Well, good morning to the children that might be listening and to the older children as well, us adults. I'd like to start by going back to the to Easter just for a little bit here, um, the day that Jesus was crucified. We know that Joseph of Arimathea got permission from Pilate to bury Jesus' body. Nicodemus brought large quantities of a mixture of myrrh and aloes. And from what I read, the custom of the Jews was to take thin strips of linen and wrap them around the body. Then the burial spices were poured over the strips and hardened just like a plaster cast hardens around a broken bone. So it's kind of like this if we pretend that this marker is a broken bone and we start to start this in, wrap the wrap it with strips of linen, say, looking like that. Okay. Then um, the spices would have been poured over that. One long sheet called a crowd, shroud was laid down and Jesus was laid on this sheet so his body was completely covered by it. Okay, I'll put that aside. Now Joseph and Nicodemus didn't have time to finish the job before Friday. Um, that was the Sabbath before it started. The sun was setting and the women who followed them there to where Jesus was buried had returned home. They would bring the spices later to finish the job. Early on the first day of the week, which was Sunday, the Spice Girls came, and these were the original Spice Girls. That's a joke, but no disrespect intended. <laughs> they brought their spices and they put them to, to put on the body of Jesus, but they saw that the stone was rolled away, and they entered the tomb, but he was not there. He had risen. So they ran to tell the disciples the good news. Peter and John ran uh, back to the tomb, and the Bible says that John saw and believed. What did John see that made him believe that Jesus had risen? Well, the one thing was that Jesus was not there, but he also saw, like our little example here, empty strips of linen. <clears throat> and when Jesus rose from the dead, it seems like his body was able to pass through things. His body went right through the burial clothes without tearing them. The clothes were there, but Jesus was not. He had risen. Well, today's gospel reading says that the disciples were meeting behind locked doors and that Jesus came and stood among them, again, able to pass through things. A week later, the disciples were gathered in the same house. This time Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them, again, able to pass through things. And even later then, the two disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus explained them to them everything about himself in scriptures. Their eyes were open, and again, he vanished from their sight. But that's a story for next week. Well, that, that's about it. I think it's really interesting about the strips of linen turning hard like a cast and um, 
his spirit was able to pass through. Um, we weren't there to see, like the disciples, uh, what ha actually happened. But I like that today's Bible reading ends this way. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, things not written in the Bible. But the things we can read are so we can believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. That's a great promise and a, and a great bit of scripture right there. Well, that's it for now. Let's uh, say a short prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you that you help us accept by faith that you have risen from the grave and that you are alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, have a great week and stay safe and we'll see you later. Bye. Our gospel comes to us today from the book of John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these things are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hi everybody. This is the part where you usually say it. Hi Beck. So it's good to see you. I want to um, talk to you a little bit today. Uh, the message that I want to share with you is uh, uh, has to do with um, a circumstance that um, is, a, is a bit puzzling in a way. Uh, the disciples are um, are gathered in the upper room because they know there's Jesus uh, told them to wait there and uh, <clears throat> they had just seen the risen Lord. Um, and um, there they are in this room and um, the doors are locked um, and it says in our scripture for fear of the Jews in fact though um, it's gonna be a lot of ketchup I think that it's one of those things where we, we, we believe a lot of things and then when we see how really horrible um, um, people can be it's 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 it makes it difficult um but i mean it, it, it this is the high point really of of um of our faith uh, you know i i think for the disciples again there's that reality factor there they've just witnessed something absolutely horrifying um we would read this and expect you know uh, to share even that that it was a time of excitement and joy and great celebration it was for a moment after they'd been uh, to the tomb and and uh um 
then they were gathered in the upper room. They locked the doors. And, um, we could look on that and say, well, what, what is going on here? Isn't this Easter? You know, how, how do we share this, this message, message of them being locked inside this room? Um, um, and I would add to you that, no, they were not sequestered like, like we are. Uh, they are, well, like we should be. They're, they're locked inside, okay? And Jesus comes in. He just walks through the wall. <laughs> um, and so there they are. And um, not only that, but uh, um, they have to revisit the scene of where things um, were really awful. Um, I think the uh, world outside doesn't really doesn't really under understand exactly. Um, what's going on with us after Easter. It's like, a, I think a lot of the people um, attend on Christmas and Easter because as I read someplace, it seems like the church really has its act together on Christmas and Easter. And then after that, uh, um, it kind of, um, they don't, really don't know what to do. <laughs> it's really awful to say that, but it's but it's kind of true. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to wrap our minds around this. It's like, not that we're there to entertain other people because I really don't believe in it. You know, uh, we're all trying to, to understand it to, um, and we need to be on this path together. Um, the other day I saw, uh, um, it's still puzzling. I saw, I saw a gopher uh, on, on a YouTube video. Um, it wasn't one in the front yard of the church. I saw this video of this gopher looking in a window, right? And uh, the gopher's eating pizza that it had got, obviously gotten out of some garbage can. And it is like, its face is right in there. It's like looking, and these two dogs are on the other side of the window. The gopher's just like trying to figure it all out. And it's like, how come everybody's locked inside the house? How come nobody's outside? It goes, I don't care. I'm having a good time. I'm eating this pizza. And it just stands there. And the dogs are like, you know, jostling around the window and looking at the gopher. And the gopher's just like, <laughs> um, I think of that, uh, um, the gophers probably think it's good for me. Maybe it's bad for you, but I, I'm I'm benefiting, right? Um, the gophers enjoying more of Easter than you know than we sometimes are, um, and and sometimes the people um, want us to 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 be able to experience some joy that they're experiencing, obviously. But we're caught up with some pain at Easter, and it's like, what's happened? It looks like something's happened. Just like it looks like something's happened around us right now. Like it's kind of an eerie thing because it is eerie you know it's it's as eerie as uh as it gets um it's some in some respects it's not here yet if it's not happening on your block uh but it will be uh this this COVID-19 that's uh coming across the United States and um a, a lot of people have um a lot of people have died around the world from this uh, uh um and um and it's Easter. <laughs> yeah, something happened. It's just, wow, um, where are we? You know, um, what are we doing in here? Um, um, whatever happened to the Psalms that we heralded at Christmas time, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Or recall the words of Isaiah, proclaiming the coming Messiah. How we felt when we heard these words, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. God has come. Why are we at reacting, I guess, as if we don't know what to believe? That in a way we could doubt God is among us. Why is it we don't hear these words? Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I have come to dwell in your midst. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord this day and shall be my people, and I will dwell in your midst. I think that probably... Um, There's something very real um, that that we long for that's not in place. Something something has shifted, all right, but there's still some things that are um, 
that make it difficult to, to for us to celebrate. Um, and John reminds us at the end of, end of his gospel here, uh, he says, that, um, there's a power that rests on us because Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into us. And he tells us, all of these things have been shared with you so that you might come to believe. Jesus' focus is on believing. It's not what it, like what it looks like to the world around us. It's almost like we said, it's like, okay, so these things are going on, but don't look at us because this isn't really a reaction of how we we believe because we are strong believers. Um, it's not what it looks like. Um, um, we wish we could just say that, but, but the fact of the matter is there is something that has shifted in a way it's shifted onto us. Um, we understand the part about judgment being upon the world. That's why these things happen where um, Jesus was crucified. That's why these things happen where um, people start to become uncomfortable and all of a sudden they don't want to be uh, sequestered anymore. We understand the sin that that is on our on us because of wanting to be able to have the freedom to do whatever we want to do, to be able to... Uh, uh, eat whatever we want in some part of the country that, that ends up affecting uh, people all over the world. Um, we want to know all these freedoms. We want to be able to just go out in the street right now and, and uh, just kind of hang out with our friends, you know. Um, we want all of that. And we get the part. A lot of us do. So I think the ones who are focused on their faith right now, get the part about how that's what happens. We get this COVID-19 when we um, think we know better. Um, one group's choices affect everyone else. But our fear, I think, um, is here for a different reason right now. Um, I think we realize how dangerous um, humanity humanity can be when it makes demands on God um, and just where non-belief gets us um, how selfish it is um, remember the story of Mary and Martha uh, after Lazarus uh, had died and um, they were upset with Jesus because he didn't come right away um, everything about life did reflect on them. I mean, what was that supposed to, to look like to those people who knew that Jesus was their good friend? How, how was it going to reflect on him and on them? You know, it's like, well, um, I guess he doesn't really care about you very much. Does he let Lazarus die? He could have healed him. What's up with that? Um, not only that, but um, he was, um, if that's all it was, but they, they loved Jesus and they, they just truly didn't understand it though betrayed by him and um, let down and um, so Jesus had a plan and um, he knew that um, what he wanted them to know um, was going to cost him his life uh, because it wasn't just simply about bringing back Lazarus physically from the dead. Just to die again, you know, think about it. So anyway, I um, I think that the, the kind of reaction we feel to the world around us, um, not that we, not that we really worry so much about um, what they think about us, but that part in all of us that that's this dangerous part of us that, that demands uh to, to to have things the way we want it to be able to make the choices we want and um um i i don't know i almost feel like with the doors locked we do because and maybe the disciples did too because we feel safer this way you know it's like uh, uh from each other it's sad Because we don't listen very well. And uh, we really get good at playing God, you know, about uh, convincing other people that what we know is the right thing. Even though it fails the test, 
uh, a smell test of science and everything else. It's like, uh, no, uh, no, this is what ought to happen. Uh, we know what's better, right? I don't know if you've seen the, the video of the little child who is uh, uh, having an argument with his mother. It's the most adorable thing I've seen. Um, with adults, it's not so adorable, right? This little boy's like, listen, 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 you're not listening to me. And he calls her by her first name, Linda, and he even calls her honey. You're not listening. And he's just parroting basically the arguments that he hears his mom and dad having. Um, if we can't listen, uh, if other people don't listen to the, to the authorities, how, how is there anybody going to li listen to us and believe our witness? Um, It's almost like we're, we're doomed um, because we know where this is going to lead and that we will be loath to have anyone uh, hear anything we have to say. And this is the week after Easter, yes. And God has redeemed God's people. And there's a silence. A part of us gets discouraged. We want to say, what happened to blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Especially when people believe in what seems like an alternate universe. Uh, who will hear us when we say, tell us, tell the timid to take heart. The Lord God will come. We know that we, we believe. We know that when we wait for the Lord, the rains will come. And our God shall come to us like the gentle dew. Even if we don't act like it right now, even if we seem sort of afraid of the world. Um, in a way, it's it's not like that. It's like our faith is, is stronger than that, but in a way, it isn't. Uh, in fact, it's exactly like that. This is the second Sunday in Easter is often called Low Sunday, as I was mentioning earlier, because... Uh, the people that like to, to share in the, the gala celebration where we feel, you know, like we have all the words down, we know what we're doing, and there's a level of comfort other people experience. And this is actually kind of referred to as Low Sunday, the Sunday after after Easter. Attendance is down. Um, boy, but it's really down today. <laughs> there's nobody in the church. You know, I want to tell you something that um, when – when you watch these videos, okay, when you watch the video of, of the worship service, um, YouTube has a way of, of telling uh, how long you watched it. <laughs> so if you're trying to sneak out early, it's like, uh, it's getting recorded. I, I had no idea about that, right? Um, anyway, so um, um, they also keep track of how many times you come back to see it, too. So that's cool. I mean, they don't record this by name, but I'm just saying. Um, so this is a this is a Sunday that the attendance is down, and and yet there's a part of us even when things are not really going horribly in our world, we still kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's like that's over with. Um, um, you know, God did God's thing, been there, done that, nothing new to see here. You know, uh, Kind of confused and kind of lost with what what now? Um, um, when I know it seems like it takes so much energy to have a celebration, but uh, um, but there's a part of of all of us that that can connect with the part in all of us that we don't like to see sometimes that um, sometimes the biggest event can have occurred in our lives. And we're not able to experience it. Sometimes the worst pain can ha be happening in someone's life and we don't connect to it. Sometimes we have a real difficult time conveying uh, hope, truth, the need for kindness, the need for respect. Because we know that um, people are going to have to experience it themselves. 
Um, and um, we know how dangerous that is and where it can lead. That was a big part of the story of Easter. Um, we, uh, we want to know that uh, we're not alone in, in um, our belief. We want, we want to believe that we're having some kind of um, powerful effect that, that, that some things have shifted in, in a good way um, on Easter. Um, and we ask ourselves, how, how, how will this be conveyed to other people? Um, how will we help other people to know that they don't have to make up an alternative world? That um, that the world we're called to live in is not the way we're living right now, and that God has called us to live as if it's the kingdom of God, which is truly counterintuitive and um, A taste of heaven. We can't do that when people don't want to love one another. We'll attack anyone who takes up the cause. We'll attack anyone who welcomes sinners. Uh... Sometimes it, it's hard to know exactly, and so here we are. Um, faith. It's about faith. You know, we could easily succumb, couldn't we? There's a story about this woman. I know I've shared this story before, but uh, she would go in the grocery store, and every week when she bought her groceries, she'd um, take a, um, a box of dog biscuits also uh, and buy those and take them home. And... Um, the uh, clerk, she always went to the same line, and people like to, to get to know people. And uh, um, there's this level of comfort. And, and uh, they'd gotten to know each other well enough that the man said to her, uh, you know, I know you don't have a dog. And because uh, we talked about this, and yet you're buying dog. I never asked you, why, why do you buy dog biscuits? And uh, she said, those are for my husband. And um, the... the Finally, he had enough uh, nerve that he could say to her, "This is not a good plan uh, um, for you to give, be giving your dog, your husband, um, dog biscuits or letting him eat them. You know, uh, uh, those are not good for for people to eat. You know, and uh, especially you're buying them every week like this." But she just did not listen, and and um, it didn't make sense to him, and and he liked her, and it was some concern and, and something obviously that. Um, uh, kind of like an aberration or anomaly that he just could not get past. And then one day she came through the line and she did not have dog biscuits. And he's like, oh, thank God. And see, she, thank you, God. She's like, heard me. And she's not buying dog biscuits for her husband anymore. All right. You know, and so she, uh, he said, well, I'm glad to see you're not buying dog biscuits today. And she goes, my husband died. And he goes, what? He said, oh, no. He said, was it the dog biscuits? I told him, don't buy the dog biscuits. And she said, no, it was chasing after cars. Now, I'm not here, I can't see you right now, so I don't know if you're laughing, but it's just that, man, we cannot be wearing around the the um, the kind of fear that locks us away from knowing that there's something else that has shifted, and it's shifted for the good, and it really has, and we need to be able to experience it. Um, We've got to be past the part now where God, we think God is nonplussed. God is totally put off by us. Um, and it would be ridiculous to think that God would ever come live among us. We need to be past that, okay? We need to be past the part that, that all that is required of us is to trust God. Because truthfully, that is all that's required of us. We need to get past the part that somehow we need to 
let people think that whatever they want is fine. Um, and that when people don't and there's horrible things going on, that, that somehow we need to kind of throw in the towel. You know, John the Baptist was upset and doubted uh, when um, Jesus came and started his ministry. After he was baptized, Jesus uh, went into the wilderness and they came. He was, he was uh, ministering to people. And, and John the Baptist ends up in prison. Uh, For preaching and um, John starts to doubt and um, he sent words to Jesus um, and the, the word was um, are you the one or, or am I to believe that someone else uh, is going to be coming because basically he's saying so like if you're the one why am I in jail it's like uh, hello um, and Jesus said tell John that the lame can walk the blind can see and the deaf can hear and that's the reality there's another reality that we often get invited to that makes us feel like we need to be locked inside um, locked inside ourselves right um, I mean, everybody locks their door at night, but I'm talking about like we're just shut down, right? Um, Jesus said, look and see. Reminders of how God is at work when we're together. That we're not alone. That good things are happening and they are the things that we've prayed for. Air pollution in the last three or four weeks has gone down below any levels anybody would have ever expected. It's not impossible. It would take an awful lot from us and yet it's not impossible and it is an answer to prayer. They were able to see the last few weeks further in Los Angeles than they've ever been able to see in their lifetimes. Staying involved and staying in where we want to lock down. There's a lot about caring about each other. It's a lot about seeing things that we wouldn't see if we were looking at the world through lenses that say that uh, it's horrible right now. Um, there's some reason we got to protest or we need to get mad. Um, I was walking the other night and um, I, I came across um, some signs and um, they were somehow, I didn't really notice how they were fixed in the bushes, but there there were um, several signs that are like uh, colored pages, uh, pages out of uh, coloring books, adult coloring books where there were uh, Bible verses and, and uh, colored um, like a mandala kind of thing. And um, when I went by the other night, those were gone, but there were new ones there, that uh, ones that were not... Um, probably from the same book, but there were sayings of, you know, like encouragement. And um, I got a, a slide of them here I wanted to show you. Um, so take a look at that. Um, Paul tells us to put on the armor of light. Um, sounds like kind of an oxymoron, doesn't it? Where light is an armor. Uh, but... Um, Protect what is good and um, surround it with light uh, because it's the truth. Um, maybe the dominant voice doesn't know that, but that doesn't diminish its power in any kind of way. After all, the biggest antidote of uh, being proven to the biggest antidote for being proved or for, for being wrong is to uh to discover just how wrong you are um and i think most of that for all of us when it comes to things like caring about people and love is at some point realizing who we've been arguing with And that um, 
we need to be proven wrong for our own good. If we want to see the kingdom of God for real, this is everybody hear this. If we want to see the kingdom of God for real, we need to look for it. We need to regard those things that we have seen as sacred. And we need to especially value this time, this great pause in life, as our time to hear the things we could not hear before. Our time to, to let God prove us wrong. So we will stop doubting. To say no to that part that locks us away in some kind of unreality. Um, and lets us hear the voice of Jesus. Who is and will be and ever shall be reign with us. Um, because it's for our own good. God is with us for real and God is still speaking. Let God continue to speak through us and walk through the walls if need be. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Uh, Lord God, we hear your voice in Easter saying no and saying yes in ways that offer us an opportunity to make choices we get to live with rather than ones we have to live with. As we seek ways to make your presence known, may the freeing and redemptive power of your love be multiplied for the sake of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.